It's a proven fact that a well-balanced diet, in addition to proper medical treatment, improves both the quality of life and the ability to recover from illness. At God's Love We Deliver in Soho, volunteers in this kitchen prepare 3,400 meals a day. The goal? To offer free, wholesome, healthy food as nutritional support to people who are struggling at home with life-altering illnesses. They supply two meals a day, five days a week to all five boroughs of New York City, Newark, and Hudson County, New Jersey. And many deliveries are made personally. And who do you think is the longtime number one celebrity patron of God's Love We Deliver? Can we talk? Joan Rivers. I want you to have him take you to a nice Italian restaurant. You stay in the car. Roll the window down. Joan and I met in the charity's pack-up room, where meals are readied for delivery. Why this charity? Uh, because I got in on it early when it was a very hands-on charity, and it's continued to be that. I like a charity where you can participate, not just send a check, even though checks are very important. And you can come down here, you can help them with the meals, you can help deliver the meals, and it's such a wonderful charity. It's branched out already from just uh, meals for AIDS uh, uh, patients to meals for anyone that needs a meal that's too ill to leave their house. It's such an individual charity. Uh, anyone that calls and says, we need help, we need food, we do it. We don't wait for the doctor's note. Uh, if you need salt-free meal, we give them the salt-free meal. If they're allergic to broccoli, they'll never see broccoli. It's so individualized. And every, we don't call them, um, we never discuss charity. They're all our clients. Good. It makes a difference. And it's just, also, it's, the money goes to the organization. Is the food connection really important to you because I know how much you like food? Food connection, well, food is the most basic drive in the world, food and sleep. Food, sleep, sex, and then <laughs> shopping. Well, was it ever higher? I mean, was there ever a change of price? food no. and sleep, <laughs> food and sleep. Well, a couple, a couple of things I want to ask that I think can be helpful to people. You have known the depths. I mean, we go into the firing, oh, yeah. <laughs> the Tonight Show, and the suicide and so forth. What has helped you survive the, the valleys in your lifetime? I just ignore them. I just push through them. I try not to dwell. I don't allow myself um, great periods of depression. I give myself what I call weekend wallows. And I will feel very sorry myself, say for two days. And then I say, that's enough. There's nothing you can do about it. It's over and move forward. So you're very pragmatic in terms of your, your mental attitude yeah, and your health. Yeah, I, make, I think a lot of your mental health, you have to make sure that you're in charge of it as much as you possibly can be. We all have depression, but you just say, no, move forward, push. push out. There are many of your generation at this point who would be who naturally. Who are dead. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> dead. But they're slowing down permanently. Many are slowing down. <laughs> But you're going as strong as ever. Yeah. How come? I am very lucky. I'm in a field that if you're funny, it doesn't matter. If, you, if your dog was funny, people would come to hear you. <laughs> and I'm very lucky that way. Also, I work very hard. And I, I, I go through every door. I don't turn anything down. I, my agent will call up and say, do you want to do? And I'll go, yes, before <laughs> I even know what he's saying. Why? Uh, because it's a profession where you have to keep going. And you don't know what's going to work. Celebrity Apprentice, I didn't want to go on. I didn't want to do it. I only did it because Melissa would be on it with me. And it turned out to be this amazing thing for us and the amazing thing for my charity. You never know which one it's going to be. Well, look, on Celebrity Apprentice, you're really in a fishbowl. I mean, you got the whole country watching. And it's like there is a reality to that. What was there about Joan Rivers that made you the winner? What, what quality inside? Uh, tenacity. I loved the challenge. 
And I loved because I was so written off as the oldest person. And I knew they all thought, she's a piece of cake. We're young, we're hip, hello, hello. And I thought, we'll see. So just pure tenacity. Tenacity and work. You know, behind anybody's career that I know of that is surviving, my friends, is tremendous work ethics. They're, I hate the term 24-7, but these are people that work and go and do. You just don't say no, I'm not feeling well. Now, where, what, if anything, in your past led you to that kind of work ethic? A mother, a father, a teacher? Drugs. Hmm? Drugs. How so? Just, I needed my drug money. <laughs> <laughs> I know, obviously. No. Uh, uh, my parents were immigrants. My dad was from a very poor immigrant family. I had a grandmother with 13 children and no husband who cleaned fish. And every one of those 13 children went to college. And so that's, that's an immigrant drive. That immigrant gene is still, it's, like, it's what's still pushing there. you still. Still there. Now, there is a, there's an... And if you're, if you're a white Jewish woman in New York City, you look like an immigrant these days. <laughs> <laughs> the, the very beginning of your career, did, did you actually experience much discrimination because you were a female comedian? Uh, it's a good question. I never um, thought about it in those days. Looking back, I think, yes, it was slower because I was a woman. But my group were Woody Allen and um, uh, Richard Pryor and George Carlin and uh, Bill Cosby, and they all got in ahead of me. But I just thought they were luckier or they were funnier. I never thought it was because I was a woman. Looking back now, I think, yeah, I think a lot of that was because I was a woman. And I didn't want to look, I wanted to be a pretty girl giving out jokes. And that was totally unheard of in those yeah, days. Yeah, because you had, like, Phyllis Diller on the Phyllis other side. Phyllis Diller, Tony Fields, and then right before her, all those other, even Lucille Ball, who was a beautiful woman, would made make herself face, yeah. look like an idiot. A clown. Like yeah. a clown. She was a clown. She really, Lucille Ball was really an actress who could yeah. be funny, not a comedian who could exactly. get up there and do stand-up or no. something and like Lucille that. And Lucille Ball wasn't funny when you met her in real life no, at all. And that voice. That uh, voice. Uh, hello, and Bill. Smart, bus smart businesswoman. Yeah. How you doing? Speed it up. She was a great businesswoman. But there's an expression, honesty is the best policy, and that seems to apply to your approach to humor, total honesty. Totally. Where'd that come from? Uh, always was there. I just always thought, you got to tell them what you really think, because that will make it funny. People that walk out and go, my mother-in-law, and they don't have one. <laughs> you know they don't have one. So I've always come out of truth. I'm going to ask you three of your favorite things. First, your favorite book, your favorite singer, Alive or Dead, and your favorite comedian, Alive or Dead. My favorite book, War and Peace. Fabulous book. When I read it the first time, I had to wake myself up to continue it. It just, it's got everything in it. Just everything in it. Um, the second, uh, my favorite comedian would be a tie. Uh, Richard Pryor, and Lenny Bruce. Two. Maybe they could each do a little shorter. Very irreverent comedians. Very irreverent and honest. Both of them told you what life was about. And my singer, oh, Maria Callas. Oh, Maria wow. Callas, because she was an actress as well as a singer. Excellent choices. How yeah. about movie? Movie, oh. Can't I'm, be the swimmer. It cannot be the swimmer. Can't be the swimmer, because I was in. In your favorite movie? Probably. Uh, I get, I like epics. I like David Lean movies. Probably uh, uh, Lawrence of Arabia would be up there. Lawrence big of Arabia, big, yeah, big, massive, amazing movie. The shots in that movie are just staggering. A couple of things about your personal life. What do you like about being a grandmother? Uh, not much. <laughs> I, I love having a grandson. <laughs> but being a grandmother is very frustrating because you don't have total control over them. So it's very hard, you know. I love the spoiling of him. I love watching him grow up and that we have a relationship. That's very important to me. Um, 
I love that we can do things together. That we have, that's what I love about it. What I don't like about it is I, Melissa's always saying you spoil him, you can't feed him that, you shouldn't do that. And it's very hard because you want to stay behind her. It's a, you know, Melissa's a very good mother, but she's a strict mother. Does your grandson think you're funny? My grandson thinks I'm funny and finally gets it what I do and gets that I make other people laugh. Oh, that's cute. Now, how about Melissa? Your daughter, you, you, well known for working with her, the yeah. red carpet, and, and lots of other things. How did that work relationship affect the mother-daughter relationship? Uh, it was, it's wonderful and it's difficult. It's wonderful working with her because we have so much to talk about and so much in common that we're never at a loss for something to talk about, you yeah. know. Uh, it's difficult because uh, she's an adult and as a mother, I want to say, do this, do that, wear this, wear that. And I can't, I have to bite my tongue and say, treat her like a co-star. That's hard though. It's very hard. That, that could be very difficult. Because you're uh, not going to turn to a co-star and say, uh, you're wrong, or she's got too many lines. Another thing, I know that you've, you're a world travel person, you've worked around the world and traveled a lot. If we could take you, like magically, and beam you up and beam you down anywhere in the world for dinner tonight, where would you want to be? Um, I would like to be in St. Pe Petersburg, Russia, in one of the old, uh, those wonderful old houses that the aristocrats had, that they've now turned into these grand slightly seedy restaurants <laughs> and you sit in these rooms that must have been unbelievable and still are but a little little seedy. Hey Joan, want to put on a hairnet and go downstairs and help in the kitchen? I don't want to put on a hairnet but I will to go All downstairs right, let's see and help. It. Yeah. Apply hairnet. Oh God. <laughs> let's go. That's why I'm still single. God's Love makes birthday cakes for those it serves, and with a little help from Baker Chuck, we tried to decorate a few. And so it ends. This is Bill Box for My Generation with Joan Rivers in the kitchen at God's Love We Deliver. Joan's delivering the food and the lines. And I'm begging whoever gets this, we're sorry. <laughs>